Good evening, everyone. I'm going to call the meeting to order for the Brawley City Council and successor agency to the Brawley Community Redevelopment Agency. Regular meeting agenda for February 21st at 6 p.m. here at the City Council Chambers. If we can have the roll call, please. Here, Council Member Hamby. Present. Council Member Revella. Present. Council Member Wharton, not here. He is. He is here. He is here. Oh, he is in, in the heavens of Zoom. Okay. And uh, Mayor Phil Kim. Pastor. Here. And Ben Oliver. Here. Thank you very much. I didn't realize this was what we yeah, just for clarification, uh, Council Member Wharton is uh, present in the uh, meeting. To, he's just uh, presenting via Zoom today. So, all right. So, invocation, and if we can have Council Member Hamby lead us in the invocation, please. Stand. Council Member Hamby. Let's bow our heads and pray together. Almighty God, our gracious Heavenly Father, we are thankful to you again this evening for your many blessings and the protection that you upon our city. We thank you for all the employees that we have working for the city of Bali. And we thank you for each resident that lives here that makes this uh, a beautiful place to live. We ask that you be present in this meeting tonight, that you would guide our thoughts, guide our conversations, that we would make wise decisions. We ask that you would heal those within our community that are sick. We ask that you would comfort those who are in distress and that you would just keep your hand on this city. In Jesus' name. Thank you. Mr. Reyes, would you lead us in the pledge, please? I pledge allegiance to, to the flag, flag of the United States, States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, liberty and justice for all. Thank you very much. All right, we're going to move on to the approval of the agenda. And there's a request to move an item from the uh, study session. session number six. And you wanted it where? Yeah, we'll just put it after the city manager report. After the city manager report. Okay, so is there a motion to approve the uh, agenda as um, discussed? Yeah, motion to approve agenda as discussed. Is there a second to that motion? I'll second it. All right, this is <clears throat> motion and a second. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Aye. Thank you very much. Motion carries, so we'll, we'll move on. Thank you very much. All right, next item on the agenda is public appearances and comments, not to exceed four minutes. This is the time for the public to address the council on any item not appearing on the agenda that is within the subject matter jurisdiction of the city council. Uh, the mayor will recognize you. Uh, when you come to the microphone, please state your name for the record. You are not to, allowed to make personal attacks or individual on individuals or make comments which are slanderous or which may invade individual personal privacy. Please direct your questions and comments to the City Council. Is there anyone here who would like to make a public comment? Please come up. All right, there's a few people here. And who would like to go first? I think Supervisor Kelly is coming up. Made it first. What happened? Hi, I'm Heidi Gutierrez. Nice to meet you all. Um, let me give you guys a worksheet. So, hi. I'm Heidi Gutierrez of Brawley Rising. Hey guys. I am part of the Don't Get Soaked Project. It's a grassroots organization formed by my team of other five college students from Cal State Fullerton University. We established this project to combat misinformation in support of the um, New Literacy Project. NLP is a nonpartisan education nonprofit. The Don't Get Soaked Project aims to educate the Latinx citizens of Raleigh and beyond, including the Imperial Valley, on the importance of media literacy and how to empower them to identify and reject false information. One example of how misinformation has impacted our community of Raleigh is the shutdown of hospitals. Some rumors that are not grounded in truth have led to the circulation of fake news. In the end, fake news is all around us, including in social media or instances where a critical news story comes out and is not thoroughly fact-checked. It is essential during those times that the people of Raleigh know how to distinguish what is fact and what is rumor based on false information. We are guiding Latinx res residents and others to NLP's website so they can utilize the resources that will teach them how to become more news literate. 
Some of those resources include Rumor Guard, Checkology, and Informable. As council members of Brawley, you have the power to make a positive impact in our community by supporting the Don't Get Soaked project. By doing so, you will be promoting media literacy, combating misinformation, and sending a strong message that Brawley is a city that values truth and transparency. The truth will help residents stay current with news, be informed of what is occurring in Brawley regarding policies and programs, and be able to share accurate information with others. Overall, improving civic engagement and participation. I invite you to support the Don't Get Soaked project by encouraging citizens to join our movement, promote media literacy, and fight against fake news. Our pledge is a simple commitment to educating oneself and others on recognizing and rejecting false information. By taking the pledge, individuals will become part of a more significant movement of citizens working together to build a more informed and trustworthy society. Ways for you to take action is to become a Don't Get Soaked Project Ambassador and following our campaign on social media. Secondly, it would be sharing and reposting our social media content on your profiles and even posting creative content supporting our project. Lastly, signing our pledge to fight against online information and sharing with friends and colleagues, as well as family, to help make a difference. Thank you for your time and consideration. Thank you and very much. I'm already following you on social media. Thank you so much. Uh, thank you very much. Don't get soaked. Yes. Thank you, uh, Supervisor Chen. <laughs> thank you, Mary Nava, Council Members, Ryan Kelly, 448 Russell Road. I just came to share some information. Uh, the county, we will be having a state of the county on March 17th in Cal Pantry at Five Crowns Cooler. And uh, please, you're more than welcome, as well as anyone in the audience. Um, first time in the Cal Pantry for this event. Okay. And, and as you've probably read, we are continuing to move forward with Lithium Valley development. Conversations are happening, uh, and we're trying to bring some, some federal resources to encourage the manufacturing element to happen here as well. So if the city hasn't been engaged in the specific plan conversation, the programmatic EIR, I encourage you to do that and make comments known and get some questions answered as well. On the 28th of February, the county will release $1 million of community benefit funds for community projects. There will be criteria, um, but it's open to jurisdictions, cities, special districts, um, as well as community-based organizations and um, clubs, social clubs that have uh, a tax ID. So. Look forward to that, and then um, in the near future, there will be um, a loan application for Indy Dwell that will be coming. I believe it will be the week after, and uh, I know the city of Raleigh is eager to see that uh, completed, so um, we'll coordinate about that so that your support could be heard. Thank you very much, Supervisor Kelly, former mayor of the city of Raleigh. Thank you. All right. Thank you. He's all right. Good afternoon, good evening, evening, Mayor, evening. Council Members. John Hernandez, 514 J Street. You know, when we're young, we think we're going to live forever, but as we get older, we start to see that we're not what we used to be. And some of my peers, the older Americans, who happen to be in a protected class, have brought to my attention a concern related to some health issues related to noise. You know, noise is a, it's a public health problem. It is. It's, it's been codified in the Health and Safety Code. It's been recognized by the California Environmental Protection Agency as noise pollution. It's been addressed by the Environmental Protection Agencies. And as we try to live in harmony in our communities and our neighbors, we need to have an opportunity to sleep well in order that we can nourish and, and, and re-strengthen our bodies for, for the next day's uh, endeavors that is difficult. <clears throat> and as we try to update things such as the general plan, noise element 
which exists, the general plan noise ordinance, which exists. There's these concerns that maybe hadn't been paid attention to in the past that maybe we have to take another look at. And uh, I would hope that your planning department, your city attorney, helps you in maneuvering this to try to strike this balance between our rights to a peaceful night's sleep and the community's right to enjoy themselves, party. A lot of cities have gone through this already. If you can do the research, it's right there. Cities have hourly times that make special uh, occasions for special hours and knock it off at midnight. There's even meters that measure the decibels. The scientific evidence of what I'm talking about exists. I don't know if, whether or not anybody has those, that equipment locally or whether or not anybody has thought about it, but it exists. And it, it's there in ordinances throughout the country of 45, 50, 65, 70. And how these are measured and how these impacts the citizens and all the Americans. So as you contemplate this and take this very seriously, this complaint by one of our, one of our uh, club members uh, who's, who find it difficult to sleep and others that aren't brave enough as she is and calls me to come before you to tell you to take this very seriously and address her complaint as a, as a formal complaint and uh, answer her you know, uh, an appropriate matter. So these concerns that are civil concerns, civil liberties concerns, even constitutional concerns of equal protection on the law here, as, as I can see, are, are something that we need to try to balance. So thank you. Thank you. Is there anyone else who would like to make a public comment here? Anyone else? I, uh, we let you guys, just to remind you guys that we do have item 6A, which would be discussing uh, our current uh, noise ordinance. Uh, so. I think uh, Mr. Hernandez was. Uh, he, he touched on it, but on he was. It, but it was. I think it was very general. But it wasn't it, specific to that. So yeah. Any others? We will be having. Uh, any others who are looking to speak on that item? It'll it'll be coming up shortly after the city manager. Is there anyone else who would like to make a public comment on any item not appearing on the agenda? Seeing none. All right. Well, is there any other comment uh, online? I'll look at no. Okay. Well, thank you very much. And we will, um, all right, the next item is under public appearances and comments. It's item 2B, presentation on the Imperial County Film Commission, the official advocate for filming interest in Imperial Valley, presented by Charlotte Teeters, film liaison consultant. Charlotte, how are you? Hi, good evening. Nice to see you guys. It's Likewise. It's been quite a while since I've been able to be in front of you, so I appreciate the time tonight. I'll try and make it as quick but as informative as possible. Um, I have to switch the glasses, though, so that I can actually see <laughs> what go. I want hey. to say. Oh, the joys. Um, <laughs> I am with the Imperial County Film Commission as well as LANDS. LANDS is another nonprofit organization that works with the BLM to do uh, safety and litter education out at the sand dunes and other public lands. So I'll tell you just briefly about that before I get started on the Film Commission. We have held... On January 14th, the 25th annual dunes cleanup, we had uh, around 1,000 people that came out to the sand dunes uh, from Glamis down to Buttercup and cleaned up the sand dunes. We took out a lot of trash. You know, most of our duners are great, and it's that 1% that we all have to go and clean up after, and we all know that. But we do this every year because we want to keep the, the public lands clean and open for everybody to enjoy. And then on February 4th, we had Star Wars Day. <laughs> if you hadn't seen that in the newspapers, we had a great event at a Buttercup Ranger Station. It is the 40th anniversary of the release of Return of the Jedi. And if you didn't know how you don't know living in this valley, I don't know. But the Sarlacc Pit Monster scene was constructed there in Buttercup Valley in 82 and filmed here. Uh, it was the largest outdoor set ever constructed at that point. And we're real proud of that history, but uh, we had actually BLM's counter said we had over 2,000 people come out, take rides out to Buttercup Valley, come and do uh, different family-friendly activities, and watch Return of the Jedi Under the Stars 
in the middle of the sand dunes. Very cool. So that's what we've been up to there. Uh, for those who are new and don't know about the Film Commission, I'm going to give you a real brief um, history here. It was formally established by the Imperial County Board of Supervisors in 95 when a film called Three Kings with George Clooney uh, and Mark Wahlberg and Ice Cube or Ice T, one of those Ices, came down <laughs> and filmed. <laughs> they all look alike, huh? <laughs> <laughs> and they established the Film Commission to be a liaison between all the different entities and the private landowners and, and the production company and make sure that everything runs smoothly. Um, I came on board in July of 2008, so if you can do really quick math, that means this July will be my 15th year uh, in this position and back in the Valley, which I've loved being back here. Um, the Film Commission is now a nonprofit organization. It attracts media motion pictures and crews, um, and we offer support to production while they're here. Uh, we serve as the administrative window, again, between all of those different entities, whether it's county, federal, cities. You know, I get them in contact with your group when they're here, et cetera. And we uh, track the significant uh, financial contributions that filming makes when they're here. So they spend money in the hotels, in the gas station, they buy food, they rent locations, et cetera, et cetera. So when they're here, they spend money, and that's what we want them to do. And, again, we attract all kinds of uh, different productions from the small student films, which we get a lot of those, photography, fashion catalogs, pr product uh, catalogs, music videos, commercials, TV, video games, feature films, which everybody gets super excited about. And then we have newer um, genres such as, well, online content, but also CGI for um, video games and those kind of things. In a normal year, the Imperial Valley sees between 75 and 100 different productions uh, here. I know that sounds like a lot, and if I'm doing my job, you don't know about them, so I guess I'm doing okay. And uh, we generate an estimated economic impact somewhere between 2 to 5 million, depending on the year and depending on the different projects and how many come down. Um, one project, such as War Dogs, came and filmed here, and that one project can generate uh, over a million dollars in estimated economic impact. So that's why we're here, is to attract those different productions. Now, again, I haven't been here in a while, so I'm going to give you a really brief on the past three years. Uh, <laughs> as you know, 1920 was not a normal year. Um, it started off a little unusually slow. Yeah. yeah, 1920 probably 19, fiscal, wasn't. Fiscal, yeah, fiscal yeah, yeah. 1920. Fiscal yeah, 1920. Yeah, 2020, right? Uh, it was not a normal year. We started off a little slow, and then we were picking up. We had over $2 million ready in the, uh, to be started, and uh, then COVID hit, and everything came to a screaming halt. Um, <laughs> we had only 600000 in estimated economic impact that year. Um, we lost out on Mayans and Animal Kingdom and Wheeler Dealer and a Ben Affleck feature. All these things went away because of COVID. And then, you know, 21 it was not any better. Mm -hmm. um, but since the quarantine, the Film Commission has stayed on the front lines of the COVID situation. And we've worked uh, with the California Film Commission, the Flicks, Teamsters, the DGA, um, the screen guilds, all of those different things, trying to uh, help in the formation of health guidelines. So we did that. And we did see the return of some production. We had 26 productions and we had an estimated economic impact of 1.6 million. Um, but productions, again, would be slated to film and then they'd have to cancel because of a COVID exposure or new lockdowns or something like that. So we really... We, we eked that out, <laughs> that $1.6 I count us lucky on that. And then to add to that, um, there was a struggle with uh, the BLM because there had been an issue with National Forest Service. They were hit with a lawsuit about what required a film permit, what didn't require a film permit, and I won't bore you with all that. So as a federal agency, the BLM also shut down their uh, filming for quite a while. And as you can imagine public lands around here is uh, an important location. Uh, that has been worked out. We are uh, issuing film permits on public lands and have been for about 
a year. Uh, so that's all been worked out. And the BLM was great in working with us to do what we could do to make sure that that started as quickly as possible. Um, 21-22 picked up, brought in 29 projects. We had 2.3 million. Our largest production that year was Disney's Obi-Wan. Um, and I know it's for TV, but it was the size of a feature mm -hmm. film. It was mm -hmm. huge. Uh, they filled hotels. They bought gobs of food and gas. And then we also had the great food truck race, if you saw that. Uh, it was filmed near Glamis in Boardmanville. Again, large production, filling our hotels and, and housing everybody. So that was great. I got to go out there and, and see how that was going. Our current fiscal year has also had its fair share of challenges. Um, continued cancellations due to COVID have sometimes hit us. Uh, and also some of the health measures that are in place but are in the process of being lifted have also made it hard for people to go out of the L.A. production zone. But I do emphasize those, uh, those challenges are being lifted in the way of, of health, uh, health measures. So we are seeing an uptick, and I'm excited about what could be coming up here in the future. Okay. And, oh, yeah, we do have uh, coming up some high-end perfume cam campaigns. If you can believe it, they're ready for Christmas next year, so they've got to ready all those things. Mm -hmm. uh, we've got a high-end photo shoot, and we have YouTube influencer content. I know that doesn't sound very exciting, but trust me, it is when we start to get uh, some of those people down here nowadays. Uh, they're shooting in all different various places around the valley, and I look forward to sharing those end results with you here in the future. In just again quickly, in 21, we recognized that uh, the challenge of the pandemic, we still needed to offer some outlets to local filmmakers and to those interested in filming. So we did a series of virtual workshops as well as virtual film festivals. And we did those in various genres like drama, comedy, um, music video, those, those different sorts of things. And we did them all online, but it gave people an opportunity to engage with uh, industry professionals that I've been able to cultivate through my relationships and my tenure here. So we had uh, film per permitting, we had screenwriting, we had visual effects, those just a varied uh, amount of workshops, and then the online, the online film festivals. This year, as we're moving ahead, we have been able to restart some in-person items. We held one of our uh, film premieres just last week with Magic Mike. So it was the first time we've had an event uh, since the shutdown. So that was great to have people back in a the theater and back having fun together. But we're also going to move forward and hold a small series of in-person film festivals, again, genre-specific, uh, in anticipation of returning to our, our large film festival next year. So that's our plan there. Uh, over the past few years, I've, not years, but over this past year, I've also uh, participated as a judge in things like the Salt and Sea Film Festival, San Diego State's Festival. I've also participated in the film tourism panel at Star Wars Day in Anaheim. That was a lot of fun, got to tell you. Uh, that was also my first outing after, um, well, I, I've been a little ill, and so that was my first outing in a big crowd. So that was, that was a lot of fun and, and quite entertaining. And uh, then I also got to go to the Catalina Film Festival and participate with them. So we're out there. We're trying to make sure that Imperial County is well represented to production mm -hmm. and to the film industry, as well as we have been able to the past few years. <laughs> And uh, slower, uh, film may be a little slower than we wished it would be, but it is picking up. And uh, i just like to encourage the city of Brawley, again, as you plan for your upcoming fiscal year, to maybe consider coming back to uh, be a member of the Film Commission and support us. Uh, you've been great partners in years past. I know that there's been reasons that we've needed to, you know, that you guys have not been able to support the past few years, but we'd like to invite you back. And if you have questions about that, be happy to provide any information that I can. And 
that's what's been going on. Be happy to answer any questions. Fantastic. Well, thank you very much, Charlotte. It's great to see you again. Thank you. I know it's been a little while since we've seen you here in person. And a uh, great update. Thank you very much for providing that information to all of us. And, uh, you know, always a very good job. So um, any comments from the rest of the council? Any questions? No, I, you know, I have been appointed as a delegate to your commission. Of if, if we are still invited, even though we're not members, I'd love to participate. <laughs> okay. I did yeah. not know that, but I will make sure that we get you some information on right. that. Absolutely. Thank you. Then. Thank you so much for the update. All right. Thank, thank you. Appreciate it very much. We're going to move on uh, with the agenda. And uh, the next item, any other public comments on any item not appearing on the agenda? We'll move past that, and we will move to consent. See. Consent, agenda. consent agenda. Items are approved by one motion. Council members or members of the public may request that consent items be considered separately at a time determined by the mayor. Is there a motion to approve the consent agenda as written? A motion to approve. I'll second. second. Okay, I believe that was... Uh, Donnie. Donnie was second. Okay. There's a motion and a second. Thank you. Um, all those in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. Thank you. Next item on the agenda is city manager report number four. Uh, I will defer. I had a couple items, but the, uh, being that it appeared we might have a robust meeting and study session, I'll just defer. until. I appreciate that very much. We'll move forward, and we will move on to the study session, which is... Item six, it's moved, it been moved to um, just after the city manager's report and in between city manager's report and regular business. So study session 6A, discussion to provide staff with direction on potential amendments to the city of Brawley Municipal Code of Ordinances, Chapter 18, noise, presented by Andrea Montano, assistant planner. Andrea. Backup is on pages 161 and 164 of the agenda. Good afternoon, Mayor, um, Council Members. Okay. So the item that you guys have in front of you guys, we are looking for direction for you guys to provide staff with direction on how you guys want to proceed with the noise ordinance. Um, I know we have received some complaints um, from some of the neighbors that live at the Ciudad Plaza building in regards to the noise that is now being generated at Spa 805. Um, when we've looked at our ordinance, um, and we've, I've discussed it also with um, the police department, we've determined that we don't feel that the ordinance, um, how it's written, would allow us to have it apply also to businesses. You know, are we actually going to have Spot 805 do a noise permit for every single one? Um, when we did take this item in front of um, the Planning Commission, this is one of the things that we discussed. Um, but the biggest thing that it came down to is, for example, Inferno, they do not need a conditional use permit because they are a restaurant slash bar. Um, but Spot 805, they were going to be a bar with some food, not, you know, a restaurant with Correct. some alcohol. So that's the only reason why Spot 805 needed a conditional use permit to begin with. So the question was, why are we going to put limits on Spot 805 as as far as the noise go, but we're not going to do it for Inferno. So I think what we're needing to do is um, look at our ordinance to to include language where there are certain requirements for residential areas, some requirements for commercial areas, and in the downtown specific plan, and it should apply in general since it is a mixed use zone where you're gonna, you could have some residential right next to some commercial or even right above it um, to have different requirements for um, that. Whatever you guys would want to, to do because it is, you know, all the, the neighbors around whatever business would, would open that would create noise, they have a right to um, live in peace and be able to sleep and things like that. But um, businesses like Spot 805, Inferno, they also have a right to be able to conduct the business. So I think we need to reach um, a happy medium that would work for everyone where we can um, we can have people follow certain rules and everyone is kind of on the same page as far as times, things like that. All right. Is that your 
Is that what you're bringing today, right? Yes. Okay. So Thank what you. we're what we're we, what we're bringing today is just some of the background information. Right. Um, I can go through the staff report if you guys um, would like, but we're we're really needing for staff for council to provide direction. staff with direction on potential amendments to the noise ordinance. All right. I'll open it up to council for discussion. I don't know if there's any comments. I do. Yeah. You know what? I I just I've been hearing all the complaints. And it's been coming back and forth. I've also had discussions with the business uh, owners of those businesses. Um, but you know, I recall uh, <clears throat> every campaign. I think in the last twenty years, everyone's talking about waking up downtown, about doing something about abandoned businesses, about the condition of our main street. And we have individuals investing their hard-earned money and not only that they're taking the profits of these businesses and reinvesting them right back into that block so main street's finally waking up and it's not where it's going to be at pretty soon it's going to be much more congested and much louder and if it gets to where we've been asking for it to be over the last several decades it's going to be much much louder now that doesn't mean that you know we don't care about our senior citizens we absolutely do we have to find a way to coexist though and we talk about balance. I'll talk to you about balance. We've been looking at these budgets uh, over the last years, since I've been here, the last two years, and we see how tight it is. And we know where the money is coming from. We know where the revenue is coming from. We need more businesses in Brawley. We need active, well, businesses that are doing very, very well. This is how we provide a high quality of life. Good, uh, your water, your sewer, uh, so your 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 streets, our police, our fire, everything else that's included in the services that are provided by the city of Brawley is paid for, not just by residents, by you know our businesses, and how much we're actually generating out there. So the last thing I want to do is see one business that's barely getting going, and then we just shut it down just like that. And I understand your concerns. What I'm asking is that we take some time. And we allow these folks to do what they need to do to improve those, those facilities so that then they can improve conditions for the rest of us. It's going to be a little bit of, there are going to be some growing pains. And I'm telling you, this is just the beginning. There's more stuff coming in downtown. And it's only going to get louder and more congested. And, and that's just the way it's going to be. This is what we wanted. Folks campaign over the years. And I've seen, I think I'm the only one that didn't campaign. I wanted to demolish it all, right? <laughs> As Council Member uh, Hanby uh, uh, has pointed out to me before. It wasn't that I wanted to demolish it, it's that I understood how difficult it was to invest in those buildings with the retrofits and all the stuff that comes into it, return on investment. It's very difficult to get that going, and it's getting going. And now that it's getting going, we want to shut them down or limit their operations while we haven't done it to others. Um, so to me, I think that we're okay. I would like to see this come back in maybe in six months to see how this is going. I'd also like to see the owners of some of these properties retrofit their buildings to soundproof um, these uh, living in these quarters where folks are living. So there's a lot of stuff that can be done on both sides. Um, but at this point, I don't think that there's anything that we need to do right now. I'd like to see this continue for another six months, maybe, and see where we go from with, from there. So, And I'm sorry, to the, uh, but this is where we are at right now. And what, what do we do? Just shut them, shut, cut them off? I mean, I don't know. Well, let's continue the discussion. Uh, any other council members would like to make yeah, a Yeah, so... You know, like Mr. Hernandez said, we need to find a balance, correct? And also the one thing, though, is, and this is no disrespect, I don't want to levy right any actions without any sort of evidence. It's not that I don't trust the complaints. I actually do. Uh, you know, but I'm hesitant to set a precedent where we'll take action, where we'll take action based on, I guess, anecdotal verbal testimony um, without any proof beyond words. I mean, if we go about to take action on verbal complaints alone without some sort of backup, we probably wouldn't have a city manager. <laughs> It'd be some pride department heads that we'd want to have to, I can show you the messages. But, um, so yeah, I think, you know, and, and, and kind of Mr. Hernandez talked about technology, right? Uh, that, a simple decibel meter, simple video recording. I went down there, you know, on Saturday, but um, I also want any amendments that are clear and concise that can be monitored, recorded, ironclad, you know, not just based off a complaint or complaints. And once again, considering the technology at our disposal and also what level, distance, time, area, et cetera, because I am in favor of this applying to all businesses in downtown, you know, 
kind of it's a restaurant that serves <clears> alcohol, <throat> and it's a bar that serves food. And both stay open to the same time. They both noises, noises, know, right? <laughs> yeah, people coming back and forth. So, um, you know, I do want it to be fair you know, and really just and spread out the whole area. You know, because I was there, like I said downtown. I parked behind, um, I guess, my jumping bean, and it was, it was. I heard a lot of music. It was around ten, ten thirty, and I was like, okay, it's pretty loud. I walked around the corner on Main, and it died down. The music wasn't coming from eight oh five. It was actually coming from a business area behind it. You know, I don't know if at home or even the Legion, but I can see someone living in the area hearing music and automatic saying, okay, that's that's eight oh five. So, right, one something that um, can be monitored can be recorded, uh, that is clear and understood by all parties. So if it were to be violated, it would be without a doubt. So when that complaint comes in, there's defined policies, procedures. We can check those boxes for corrective measures uh, for both immediate and long-term and an understanding by all those involved from the complainer, complaintees to the complainers to the city as well. So, yeah, I think, like I said, taking, not taking our time, obviously. There's some issues at hand and some understanding that needs to be made and, um, and concessions that need to be had as well. But, uh, no, I think there's going to be a little ongoing discussion moving forward, especially with the downtown strategic plan, some things you guys got in place. So, um, you know, because downtowns are active. They're active. And uh, if you look at various downtowns throughout the state, bars and clubs do uh, populate and, and make up a majority of businesses, I think. So uh, it's a conversation that's going to be had. And so hopefully we can get the community beyond maybe these meetings, maybe some forums, maybe some, um, you know, bringing together. So... Um, yeah, I think just taking our time and not taking our time, but keeping this con conversation going. Any comments? Yes, Mr. Mayor. Um, <clears throat> I, I do think that what we have longed for here is a, is a vibrant downtown. And however that evolves, I think we have to be forward thinking. And, and I think that that each business owner also has to think of the fact that, that as we grow downtown, it will be mixed use. There will be some people living there. Um, in addition to the buildings and I, and I think are the businesses and I think that that is part of a vibrant downtown community and I guess that has to be understood when you move into an area like that that there is going to be noise that goes with it I, I understand most of the people that live in Ciudad Plaza were there before you know there was an a, a spot 805 or some of these other businesses but um, there does need to be I think a, a, a balance as Mr. Hernandez said of you know, being a good neighbor um, both ways. Uh, it seems like one of the one of the main complaints beyond the the volume was the time, and there's probably got to be a reasonable time limit on that kind of noise. You know, whether it's midnight or whatever. But it's uh, correct me if I'm wrong. It seemed like someone said that it was going until one thirty or two in the morning, and I think that's. Other than very special occasions, which we understand, you know, cattle call and that kind of stuff, there's going to be a lot of activity. But um, beyond that, it seems like there needs to be some time limits on on the extra loud music. But um, and, and there is a conditional use permit, and that would be a, the appropriate time to put restrictions on sure, things. You know, exactly, so that, which and, and it seems like in the backup it said that that wasn't no restrictions were placed at that time. So I, I understand that it's going to feel like you know. Uh, extra restrictions are put on after the fact, but I think that there's probably a way to come to an agreement where, you know, everyone is equally happy or unhappy with <laughs> with the end result, and, and a lot of times that's how it works. But I do, I agree some with um, what uh, Mayor Pro Tem uh, Castro said, that, you know, this is the direction that this downtown is heading, um, but also I think there needs to be a balance. So I don't know if Mr. Wharton has anything to add to that. Council Member Wharton, do you have any uh, thing you'd like to add? I didn't uh, sound as bad as I do. I would probably <laughs> speak a bit longer, but uh, um, I appreciate my colleagues uh, in the comments they have. I felt very much the same that I really do want to know more, and I do not want to run counter. Uh, to what we worked hard to do. And one thing we got to remember uh, about that specific spot of spot 805 is these were all a result of the serial arsons that we had, and we can't forget that. That it was not very long ago that um, we lost a lot of buildings, legacy buildings, that were going to be very expensive and hard to restore. So I think a little creativity um, has, has brought that back to an extent. So um, I, I certainly think there's a broader discussion here. 
And uh, I, I think there's got to be some way we can craft a solution um, that does address to some degree um, our residents. I think we're all sensitive to that, but uh, uh, I want to be very careful about it. So I think that was echoed in all the comments. So thank you. Thank you very much. If I may thank add one more thing. Ma Mayor Pro Tem, uh, Mayor. Castro has another comment. And you, that, before you do that, you were... You forgot to say something when you said we wanted to wake up downtown. You were supposed to say no pun intended. No, 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 <laughs> you know I mean? Sorry about that. Yeah. It, no, and again, the reason I'm referring to, I'm, I'm asking that we review this again in six months is because, you re, you, as we all know, summer hours are coming here. When the summer is here, the sun doesn't set till at 8 p.m., 7.30. I mean, uh, we have to avoid the heat. And in other countries of the world, this is the only place that I've been to in the world where it's this hot and everyone operates during the day or like at six in the morning and noon. <laughs> uh, I was in the Middle East, and I'll tell you what, moviegoers were out there at two, three in the morning. They take advantage of the cooler weather at night. And so that's kind of where I'm seeing this headed, and I'd like to go through, get through the summer and kind of see how that works out. And again, like I said, I'd also like to see some of these uh, residents or some of these, uh, for example, the Cedar Plaza, uh, retrofit their buildings to make sure that they're soundproof as well to help with this issue. So that's all I have. I'll shut up. <laughs> well, thank you for the comments. Uh, just with respect to myself, I know, you know, I, I think uh, Council Member Wharton pointed out the fact that those were locations that were burned out previously, Inferno and 805 and other places. Um, and so we do want to see uh, downtown flourish as much as it can. I know it's been a challenge for many businesses to locate down there, and it is money that's spent investment uh, dollars that are spent. It's entertainment too. Obviously, the the reason those places are functioning is because people are going there and having a good time, and they're out and spending money and you know recreating. Uh, but I do believe that there there could be a balance, uh, and I, I don't necessarily want to single any business out and say, hey, you know, you have to do a certain thing. Um, but I, I do appreciate the comments shared by council and the public. And other members of the public here that would like to comment on this topic, I'm going to allow them to do that. And uh, I do believe that the business owners here as well, if you'd like to present any uh, information or comment, uh, now is the time to do so. Thank you. Anyone? Mr. Reyes. But not the business owner. <laughs> <laughs> well, as uh, many of you know or may not know, I'm a longtime promoter. I've put on events for 35 years here. <clears throat> um, I've had the police call on me in some of my outside events, even at my house. <laughs> yeah. So that's why I never call, even though we have a noisy neighbor. We never call for that reason because it's a bad experience. We put up for it that day. But I can feel for our, our uh, older generation because they're in a, in a very tough situation and this younger generation don't even start partying until much later than even I did. And maybe even Ramon's, they start later, right? That's why they stay open so late. They quit earlier than I did. Oh, okay. At the same time. They just go <laughs> um, I, I, I have been there at 805 many times, and I enjoy it. I think it's a great spot. I think there's a lot of potential for our whole Main Street that is revitalizing it, along with Inferno and the new bar coming up down the street. And uh, Sophia's, it's really going well. Um, like you said, there has to be a meeting of the minds. I don't think the owner is adverse to maybe changing some things. I'm not going to speak for him, but I'm saying um, I've spoken with the general manager who was here, Jason, and said, you know, maybe sometimes he could be a little bit lower when it gets later, I think. You know, that's a easy compromise to make, I think. Um, Time-wise, maybe during the week, but weekends, they need to stay open as late as possible. And that's how they make money. They don't even open in the summer right now if, unless they enclose it, right? So they got to survive during <clears throat> those hard months. Um, as far as just letting it ride for six months, not without meeting with everyone together, I don't think. I think they need to set a time where you guys all meet, kind of make some progress towards what you want to do. And as you both said, I think you do need a historical context of the decibel readings because, like I said, it's not all from 805. I can tell you that for sure. Certainly. Yeah, it's definitely not all from there. Mm -hmm. But decibel readings, and then you can kind of set what's reasonable according to to health codes and so on. I'm sure there that exists, right? And, uh, yeah, when it's too loud, it is impactful. You know? When I have to yell at the person who's right next to me, it's a little bit too loud. I agree. You, you yell at me all the time, and it's not even loud. <laughs> you know what I mean? yeah, right. 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 Had many conversations. Yeah. <laughs> Just went to the last concert, uh, Control, and the sound was was much better regulated, and it was at a good spot. And I don't think there were any any complaints that they from. Uh, I don't think people that were living there as well. Um, so yeah, they can also do their own sound retrofitting. I think Ramon has a good 
a good concept there. The spot itself can have some retrofitting, and the building itself where the people live as well. There are things that they can be done professionally, right? Um, ultimately, we don't want that business to go. We want it to, to grow, and we want others to come in. And you guys are in a rough spot. We understand that. You're, you are being considerate. At the same time, you've got to be considerate to uh, business owners and their right to, to growth as well. But as you said, as the young lady said, though, you're, what's good for the goose is good for the gander. Inferno has to be included in that as well. Other people have talked about that before as well. Um, maybe because the proximity is different from Inferno to where 805 and the or people are living. American Legion, right? Right. So I, I would hope you get together soon with everyone involved, stakeholders, and come to some changes you can make at this point as you build your history, as Ramon and, and uh, Gil said, and make a historical decision as well on decibels, readings, and what's healthy and what isn't. I think we can survive, all of us. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Reyes. Anyone else would like to make a comment on this topic? Come on up, please. Oh, certainly. To the mayor. Hello. The um, city attorney, city manager, and to the city council. Um, I'm not... Uh, my complaint is the 805 is not to shut it down. Certainly. I'm simply asking to lower the music after 10 p.m. Because otherwise, the Serdot Plaza, my window, both my windows, the bedroom window and the living room window, facing Main Street, and the sound is coming directly to the windows, and I can't sleep. Understood. That's what I'm asking. Certainly. And I, I did want to clarify want that to as well. See, I want to see Brawley grow too. That's very important to me too. But that's all I'm asking. And I'm asking if you please could find some solution to it and as soon as you possibly could. I appreciate the clarification. I'm glad that you brought that up because you're, you know, I, I know people talk about closing a business. No one, you've never discussed that. You've never no, said that. I've never you, said you, you've said business. no, absolutely no. not. And so you have just, you know, your your chief concern has been the the sound level and yes. after a particular time. So yes. I appreciate very much that sure. you came up here to say that. Mm -hmm. Thank, Thank you, you very much. Thank you. Mm -hmm. uh, I think there's members here from 805 that'd like to come up and express <clears> their. <throat> going all right I'm, I'm the owner of uh, spot 805 my name's josh um i've been hearing about these meetings for a while now um about our noise we have taken steps we have bought different speakers we've eliminated speakers and uh we've even got a decibel reader <laughs> that shows when we stand in the corner of see that plaza with no music on, was reading 65, 70 decibels with traffic. With our music on, it didn't even change. Um, <clears throat> inside spot 805, peak decibel reading was 87 to 92. And after 10 o'clock, we turned it down to about 75, 80 around there. So <clears throat> we have been taking steps to try and help you guys out. Um, guess it's not there yet we, we are working on it you know um, if there's anything we can do just just come and let us know I, I think that's um, probably the most important step I realize that coming to City Council is one way to exercise your right you know yeah. but having a conversation with a business owner I think and here's an opportunity to talk to him in person seems like a very sensible person and I do like his hairstyle by the way but uh, <laughs> But he seems like Hereditary. a sensible person, right? <laughs> and so um, I think having that conversation, and he has made it um, publicly known that they are working on that, that effort, I think is a, a good first step. So, so uh, just to let you know, our original plan was to enclose it and build a gym. But COVID ruined everything for everyone. Right. So we do still plan on enclosing it, but I'm not rich. I don't <laughs> come from, from a lot of money. So we definitely got to make as much as we can now. To try and save up and but eventually you know, do that, yeah. but that is still the plan. I mean, right? Oh, yeah, yeah. That, that's you, the goal. Yeah. You have uh, so you have other investments <laughs> in downtown. So correct? right now, I am never there. We invested in a 525 Main Street. We are expanding Breakout Fitness, 
So Jason here, who runs the uh, Spot 805, will be in charge of it. <coughs> um, so anything you guys need, I mean, we're working on it. I mean, uh, the equipment to have these concerts and stuff is not cheap. You know, we invested over $40,000, you know. And uh, we're trying to bring, well, I think she left, <coughs> back to the film industry. We're trying to bring outside talent in into Brawley. So it just takes time, yeah. you know. How, are you guys, I mean, I see that there's like every week it feels like you guys have done something to that place. That, correct. Is that, what? The, am I correct in that assumption, that assuming that you guys are taking everything and just putting it right back in? Yes. Okay. Tap that. I got a wife who pays the bills. <laughs> <laughs> right. So... I'm and she's, very, she's very watching fortunate. right now, so she's I hope so. right right down there. <laughs> <laughs> no, you I, know, I'm, I'm very fortunate. I got an awesome circle. My dad, who lives in Oxnard, um, helps out there. Jason's doing a good job running it, bringing people in, bringing the comedy shows, uh, entertainment, and all that. Um, he has a whole list of people he wants to bring. Sure. Just a matter of getting funds in. Well, now, <clears throat> I know you said on Wednesday we're open late. I, I do apologize about that, but I told Tyler, that's our best night of the week you know um a lot of ceos border patrol um cops uh, are off thursday fridays and man it, it gets packed in there on wednesday i don't think people you need to tell us everybody <laughs> you know? people yeah. all want to see everybody's you know? business out there oh it's karaoke yeah, night. it's karaoke yeah. night. Our, our, out ma our mayor gets down no, no, I don't, I don't, oh, yeah. so, and like i said people want to go out we spent the last two years yeah. pent up you know lock <clears> order to stay home and you know now people want to go out Yep. Yeah, but I, I appreciate your sincerity in coming in here, yeah, yeah. and I think if you can work on something to help maybe Definitely. alleviate the concern there, I think it'd go a long way. And, um, you know, without having to go through decimal readers and, you know, right. city ordinance and everything, I think that's there to protect the public, certainly, but I think just being a good neighbor um, goes even further, you know? Yeah, so. yeah, yeah, definitely. Yeah. Um, or maybe working also on uh, Ms. Shelton, correct? Or Ms. I'm sorry, Mrs. I'm sorry, I'm forgetting your last name. Gast? Goss. Goss and Mr. Yeah, Nye. They're part of the Brawley Senior Club. Maybe working together with something for yeah, them yeah, on definitely. Um, yeah, I don't know if community guys, benefit. I don't know if you guys saw we did uh, breakfast with Santa for the kids. I mean, yeah. we're trying to do all kinds of things. Sure. Uh, one of the things we're looking in the future is maybe putting an ice skating ring in there, <laughs> you know, instead of people having to travel out of town. Sure. You know, so those are things we're all looking at. Um, now that we got our, our full kitchen going, we are going to be open all days, but I guarantee we won't be open late all days. So sure. um, it all depends on the city of Brawley citizens. Sure, and they'll support in. your business yeah, too. Yeah, I mean, yeah. you, you got to consider so, that too. I think people are going out and they're spending money there. So there is, there is a desire for entertainment. There is a desire to go out. There is a desire to have a good time. So I think just being good neighbors, having that conversation. You know, Jason, he, he's been uh, you know, in entertainment here locally for many years. He's done a good job, and I think he's going to do a good job there for you. So um, you know, unless there's any other comments from the city council, I would just like to encourage you to have that conversation, yeah, yeah. and uh, we appreciate you coming in. Yeah, yeah. anything you guys need, just let yeah. me know. You we'll we'll, we'll continue this topic, I think, over some, the course of time. Um, but at this point, I don't see if there's a real. I mean, it looks like maybe we can work it out right um, now. You I know, mean, hopefully you notice the difference Wednesday. We did buy different speakers, so we're definitely not putting out those big speakers. So those won't be out this Wednesday. All right. So let me know if you see a difference. Yeah. You know? And I would encourage you also, as it was mentioned, maybe following up with the senior center. Definitely. You know, they're, they're a group of people that, that are concerned within the city, yeah. and, and they're a good group of people, great group of people. Definitely. I always tell people, if you want to have a good time, go visit the seniors, you know what I mean? And 805, of course, you know, but go, go, to, go visit the seniors. All right. Thank you. Thank you. I, know, right, I know one way uh, people that live in apartments that have noise complaints, what they do is they invite their neighbors to their party right. so that... That's right, what I that's, do. Yeah. That's what I do. <laughs> so maybe have a... A senior night or something. There you go. Stop getting complaints about me after that. Mr. Nance. This is good on the one hand that, that the business recognized, but it's not about 805. In my view, it's not about 805. It's about noise in our community. It's about having something that you're supposed to have, that you're supposed to have a... a in, in your noise. I mean, look, he, he had a, a, a decibel reader. And there's cities that have 
after 10 o'clock, no 70. After 12 o'clock, no music. You need to you need to really look at that. And I just 805. You know. <laughs> I see Ryan, and, and that reminds me that he could have been making some loud noise, but he's not right now, right? But the ordinance should be there for whoever comes behind Ryan, whoever comes behind 805, whoever comes to sleep, try to sleep it at Ciudad Plaza or down the street where I live. I don't get it as bad, but I do get it. So it's about, it's about having a, a good, solid, enforceable city policy. ordinance. Certainly. Yeah. That's, what, that's what I'm talking about. It's not Certainly. about 805. Certainly. In my view. Well, I think right now the, the topic no, is right, 805, right? Right, right. now yeah. it's not. Yeah. The topic is yeah. not 805. Well, it is. The that's the, the concern that she brought forward to us. It was 805, and it was the concern with respect to 805. I, so that's what, Well, that's, uh -huh. that's the only right. that, that's that, the That's the reason it's on the agenda, then, right. Uh -huh. And I, I, and I think she, she wants a, a formal response to sure. the complaint. And also it states in the, is that, John, is that in the minutes? Is that in the minutes that we read this? Uh, the backup material? Yeah. I don't know what you're talking about. Would you get it for me? There's no restrictions. The planning commission gave no restrictions to 805. They could play the music as loud as they wanted to. There's no time limit on it. Okay, this is what it says. Um, background information. The planning commission approved a conditional use permit for spot 805 without noise restrictions. On April the 6th, 2022, during the public hearing, the Planning Commission received a public comment from one community member who expressed concern regarding the noise level that would be generated. Property owners within 300 feet of the spot 805 property were noticed as, re as required by city ordinance. Lay it down. Yes. So maybe, I guess. So there's yeah. no restriction on 805 regarding the music. As far as we heard from the Planning Commission, the CUP, they had no restrictions, mm -hmm. right? <clears throat> so am I correct in saying that, Andrea? She yeah. can come up here. And, and yeah. according to the noise ordinance, also it's very vague. It doesn't say when the noise, it doesn't give no time that the noise should be lowered. Yeah. Right, and I, I think what she explained um, earlier is that they felt that that didn't apply to that particular um, location. That, that, that ordinance was more specific to um, individual events. And, I, and maybe she can explain that a little further, uh, Andre. If you, this is our city planner, associate planner. Um, so I don't know if I'm going to try to mess around with the microphone. Too sure. Much, no. broke, but, um, so that that's correct. So when, when we were um, seeing the CUP at Planning Commission, the biggest thing was with that they did not feel it was fair to put restrictions on spot 805 when other types of businesses that would not require CUP would not have these same restrictions. Um, so I think... Um, Ms. Goss? I think Ms. Goss is correct in that it needs to be codified with certain restrictions um, so that they apply to everyone. So I think, uh, you know, not only reinvent the wheel, I know Mr. Hernandez brought up, and I'm sure other cities, right, maybe as an informational item in a future meeting, bringing up what other cities' ordinances are pertaining to downtown and noise. Maybe some things are more clear. Because as I've gone back and said, these ordinances that we have, not just this one, but there's quite a few that are a little bit vague, a little old, and um, can be revisited. So I think maybe compiling other cities, maybe similar to ours, or just have, have revamped their downtown or have gone through those these growing pains as well and wait that what they've done and seeing how we can apply it to ours. And right instead of just having it go in red line, maybe just seeing what templates are out there that we can apply to ours. So as an information item, maybe in the future. If the right, and, and that's really why we were bringing the item to you guys today as a study session, just so that we can get some direction as to how the council kind of wanted to move with it so that we didn't go in a completely... Um, different direction that council would want. So that that's just what we're asking for today is just some direction so that we know where to start off. All right. Considering the conversation we had, uh, is there any uh, direction that council would like to take? You know, I think uh, we let them work it out at, the to at this time, right? And I think uh, Mr. Hernandez is correct. If we could review our noise ordinances for all businesses, not just to apply 
not just specifically to 805 or, or any sort of business that opens up, you know, kind of doing the same, same activities as 805. Uh, I get it, right? After, I don't know, for some 10 p.m. is late. To me, it's super early. I, mean, I go to bed like at 3. <laughs> so, I mean, right? I'm not there yet. <laughs> um, but again, I think that is something that we need to let them work out and perhaps review again. And if possible, um, I think uh, Councilman Rebar was on, on point there. We could have some discussions. But before taking any action, yeah, we yeah. probably need oh. to look at this further. Yeah. So too, it's also part of the downtown specific plan area too. So it's a, a little bit of a different segment to cut out, you know. And so it does allow for entertainment and things like that. So it's a little bit different, certainly. And I, like I said, I'd like to see like different ordinances from different cities around the state as well, and in the future sure. for this item. Sure. And I think our city manager had a well, comment. I was just that was going to be asked. Yeah, for direction go. was we can bring back sure. some uh, ordinances the from future. other cities as an right. informational item for the council. I appreciate that. Thank okay. you. And then we, I think, more immediately to address, I think the business owner has has uh, offered to to reduce the noise, and they've got a new sound system that will help alleviate some of the concerns there too. And we're going to continue to follow it too. So. Good, and Mrs. Goss, uh, you know, don't, uh, don't be afraid to bring it up with your landlord as well to you know do some retrofit in that building. And you know, soundproof some of those rooms. I mean, there's there are ways to do it to minimize the sound in your in your room, uh, in your apartment. I mean, that he probably can invest in that building as well. So, I think it's a two way street here, and I think we all need to work together. Yeah. So, well, they're they're a business too, though. You know what I mean? Correct. So everybody. All right. Exactly. Well, thank you all very much for the public comment. Uh, we appreciate it. We'll move on. Um, to regular business, discussion of potential action to adopt Resolution 2023, rescinding the Declaration of Local Emergency made in March 2020, presented by William Smearden, City Attorney. Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. So as uh, I think we're all aware, the, the governor announced that the statewide state of emergency will be uh, ending at the end of the month. We have a local state of emergency that's probably long overdue that needs to be rescinded. Uh, right. The Health and Safety Reco Code does require... Uh, the state and local and county government to rescind a state of emergency at the earliest possible moment. So I think right. I think we're a little late. All right. So is there a motion to adopt uh, the resolution? A motion. There's a motion. Is there a second? I'll second. There's a motion and a second. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 All right. Okay. Motion carries. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Next item, and then we're going to try to go. I know there's backup materials been provided to council, and it's available to the public. Uh, these are many of these items are just um, operational items, so we're going to try to go through them quickly uh, for everybody's sake. Review and potential action to approve awarding ninth generation computing Inc. up to sixty thousand dollars for the purchase <coughs> and installation of city's core network upgrade. Further authorize the city manager to execute the agreement presented by Armando Garibay, Director of Information Technology. Oh, he brought his own mic. Look at that. That's how you do it. Brother. Good evening, yeah. Council. Mayor Armando Garibay, IT uh, Director for the City of Brawley. Um, I brought before you a recommendation to review and approve the awarding of uh, replacement of our city core network in the amount of $60,000. For nth generation, and just without getting to too technical, the core network is the backbone of the city. This is where all of our devices connect, and so this is uh, core network. Usually, have a five to seven year lifespan, and we're at year six, and we are at capacity with what we have. So, I am presenting to you an, uh, a recommendation to upgrade what we have with newer technology and the ability to expand if there was future gro growth um, as far as buildings, um, city, connectivity, um, and that's what I'm bringing before you. Thank you. Mr. Mayor, this is uh, Council Member Wharton. I read the backup material. I say we move forward, and I know this is tied to ARPA funds, so uh, I'd like to make a motion. All right, there's a motion to approve. Is there a second? I'll second. There's a motion and a second. Any discussion? All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mr. Garibay. All right. Next is discussion potential action to approve an MOU between the City of Brawley and California National Guard, providing the Brawley Police Department with an analyst. Further authorize the Chief of Police to execute the agreement. Presented by Jimmy Duran, Chief of Police. Chief Duran, how are you? Good evening, Mayor, Good members evening. of the Council, City Manager, staff, and public. Uh, yes, we're putting this request for this MOU 
and, and I guess the first question is, why is the National Guard, you know, trying to help the city of Brawley? Uh, we got to realize this is a counter-drug task force program. Uh, that has been in existence for quite a while. It's really made to help uh, local, state, and federal uh, and tribal law enforcement agencies and community coalitions uh, to do just that, you know, counter-drug uh, missions. Uh, so our request is pretty simple. It's for an analyst from the National Guard. And, 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 and if you see, actually, I'm going to hand this out. I was not able to get this before, but this you can read later on. This really talks about exactly what the National Guard can do for us. Are you trying to recruit us? Uh, their task force. <laughs> Their task force, um, and the type of request that we're going to have again is for analysis, and analysis is going to help our, our our bid team. I don't know if we can put that up there. Okay, and uh, I'm going to be talking a little bit about the bid team. As you know, our bid team is our task force that we have in the city of Brawley, which is comprised of uh, a lo uh, local law enforcement officers and and federal law enforcement officers. Uh, a lot of people don't know even our city that we have three federal agents assigned to the city of Raleigh to help uh, co counter drug uh, missions. And you would think, what? wow, how much work is there out here in Raleigh? What have these guys been doing? So I'm going to give you a little bit of insight today. Uh, that way it fills in the blank of the necessity of having an intel analyst. We, we have a lot of raw, raw data uh, that the uh, detectives and the task force officers get uh, that needs to uh, be put in a, in a workable format, and that's where the analyst comes in. So I don't know if I can just hit this. Uh, okay, down here. Okay, so this is uh, our stats for 2022. Um, uh, we haven't released this, this information. We have not made it public until now. Uh, you, you're going to miss the top part. You can't. I don't know if we can see the top part, Armando, or well, I'll, I'll just read the top part. But I'm going to go down the line really quick. Um, there you go. So the amount of uh, drug seizures have a street value of 20, oh, just over $23 million. That's what our team did uh, in 2022. Uh, if you go down the list, cocaine, 4.4 pounds, and there has a street value. Fentanyl, that's, we know it's one of the biggest issues. Well, we've been hard at the war on fentanyl. That's 11,800 pills or 11,800 doses off the street in our city. And where it says fentanyl AOA, that means uh, operations that we work with other agencies where we can't claim that we were the only ones involved. 136,000 uh, pills or, or, or doses. Fentanyl powder, you know, just uh, you know, less than a quarter of an ounce. Heroin, just a little bit. We didn't get a whole lot. Methamphetamine, 97 pounds off the street. 97 pounds. Working with other agencies, 444 pounds, almost 445 pounds off our street. Uh, marijuana, 782 pounds. Marijuana plants, this on the outskirts of our city uh, into the county, 39,260 plants of marijuana, illegal growth. In other pills, 185. And in case you were wondering how it looks, uh, so, well, actually, uh, let's talk about firearm seizures, 58 in 2021, 74 in 2022, arrests, 87. And in 2020, 209. This is just our task force, you know, that is that has a counter drug and violent crime mission. Uh, and again, uh, uh, when they're doing this, they're actually doing other cases as well. They're working homicides. They're working anything else that is that has violence in it. Uh, so this is how, you know, a part of a, when you're looking at a thousand plants, that's how kind of like how it looks. So this is the kind of stuff they've been doing. Um, there's some, uh, you know, seizures of fentanyl. More marijuana plants, more bulk marijuana, uh, and there's our officers down here. Why didn't they blur out the dogs? Face? Well, because he was officer. he was brave he's enough. He was brave enough not to request that, right. you know. So he's yeah. he's willing to <laughs> to, not, to reveal his identity right. to the public, uh, not our That's narcotics like, officers. Yeah, right. And, and, and we even put a, a little arrow down there. I don't know if you see him, just yeah. to make sure you didn't miss yeah. him. He's right there, and the, you know, almost camouflaged. Well, right? So he's not afraid. He he's brave. the only one to stepping up. So. And this is the kind of stuff that our officers are doing. Again, more, more uh, drugs and weapons. And when you see this type of weapons being removed from our streets, you're like, wow, I can't believe this kind of stuff is out there in our city. Well, that's what they're doing. And that's why we have a counter-drug mission. And that's why we're requesting an analyst from the California National Guard. And that, 
our, our, our statistics sparked their interest. So they're willing to provide the analysts and also air support for us. Oh, so, right. and again, the, the best thing out of this whole thing is something our city manager likes, zero cost to the city of Raleigh. <laughs> this will be sponsored by California National Guard. So. Hundred percent. Hundred percent. Thank you, Chief. Is there a motion to approve this item? No, I got. I got one thing. You sure. know, Chief. Thank you for this. And, and it, uh, over the week, this ties in with another item on the agenda at the end. But you know, over the weekend, there was a report of a new drug, xylothene, or known as Trank, that's being seen in overdose deaths in San Francisco and LA. And, and now that's another thing to keep. So it's just it's compounding. And so thank you for taking off the street. But is that's twenty three million worth of drugs that we got off. Yeah, we got I off. I mean, there's still, yeah. you know how much and. That's the other component of the public health and treatment and whatnot. So, it, and, and I and, and also want to bring is thanks to our, our, our uh, uh, you know other agencies who are actually helping us out. Like again, federal agents assigned here, right. our, our greatest partner, United States Border Patrol, that really put in a lot of efforts into helping uh, keep our city safe, not just the border. Uh, and, and let's face it, this would have not been possible had we not had this task force. This task force has been operational for a year and a half in, in our city. And if it wasn't because of this, there's, these drugs will be still, and weapons will still be out there. So, awesome. thank you, Chief. Good job, Chief. Is there a motion to approve the item? A motion. A motion. To there's approve. a motion. Is there a second? I'll second. There's a motion and a second. Any further discussion? Uh, all those in favor, please say aye. 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 Thank you very much. Motion carries. Thank, thank you, Chief. You. All right, we're going to move on. The agenda, and that is uh, regular business 5D. And again, uh, just for brevity's sake, let's let's move through these quickly. But uh, the backup material is available for everybody's benefit. Um, many of these items are just uh, technical in nature, and um, they're standard process in our operations. Anyway, um, item D. Discussion potential action to approve adopting resolution 2023 approving Cal Home grant application for $500,000 in funds to be used for owner occupied rehabilitation housing program presented by Talia Salcido, our city manager. Did you have something? No, no, no. Just, okay. <laughs> uh, yes, I'm filling in for our housing division uh, tonight. Uh, before you is a consideration is a $500,000 Cal Home grant application. Uh, to help our low to uh, mod income residents. It's citywide. Uh, the grant would be uh, citywide, and it's for rehabilitation of homes, uh, which can include reconstruction, owner-occupied owner only, no rentals. And the loans will be 20-year deferred with 0% interest rate, and the grant is for three years, and we have done a, a program similar in the past so. we have we've done yep. those programs in the past and they have helped uh, rehab some properties done a nice job I, I do believe there was one where we did end up taking it back and it we held it for many years and then ended up selling it but overall the program has been successful so uh, mr. So. mayor I'd like to uh, make a motion to approve item 5d thank you is there a second a second there's a motion and a second any discussion all those in favor please say aye aye aye, aye. Motion carries. Thank you. All right. Next item on the agenda is item 5E, discussion potential action to approve Los Amigos de la Comunidad request to close Main Street and a portion of North and South Plaza Streets to hold the annual Cesar Chavez celebration. Secondly, approve request by Los Amigos de la Comunidad to sell alcohol during the event presented by Rachel Fonseca, Parks and Recreation Manager. That has been broken up in two sections for the benefit of council. So... And is Rachel? Members, she, 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 members of the council, Rachel was like a parks and recreation manager. I apologize, I have a residual cough, so I'm going to be very brief. This is a repeat item, uh, same request as last year for a street closure of Main Street and for the sale of alcohol. Mr. Reyes is here for any questions that council may have regarding the event. Thank you very much. Is there a motion to approve the I item got, or any questions? Yeah, I got a quick. So I know in December we waived the fees for the brisket event, mm -hmm. correct? No, not, we didn't waive no fees. We, <laughs> not you. <laughs> we, no. Uh, um, and I remember seeing the agenda and asking that there wasn't an amount, you know, and then I, I think I asked, and the guy shared me ten to $20,000 for an event, and, um, and we waived the fees, but there was never an amount, a specified amount. Um, and I just kind of see this amount, which is what, 900, a little less than 1,000, right? And, you know, I'm not trying to put the chamber on the spot, but they don't want to pay this, you know? And I think, quite honestly, I think, uh, we said, I know for me, it's the precedence of setting the chamber's fees, uh, waiving the chamber's fees, I'm actually be, I think, more uh, in favor of waiving these as well. Um, 
And like I said, not just because what we did in December and the, there was no amount on there, on the agenda, uh, but also I think this event is a bit more, and no offense to the passionate brisket makers and eaters, but I think <laughs> this event has a bit of a more significance than that one. And so I said, I'm in favor of waiving the fees um, at the actual will of the board or administration. I'm not sure, but I'd be in favor of waiving these fees. Thank you. You had a comment, uh, Mr. Uh, yes, the, the the street closure fee is five hundred dollars, and that that fee is what the standard fee is, regardless yeah. of who's asking. Um, yeah. Is it too low? Yes. Yeah. Uh, and uh, Carla's going to present something that in the future and uh, coming up on the agenda about updating our fees. No. Uh, I will also, if I may, Council Member, sorry. Yeah, uh, the the four hundred and thirty seven is for cleanup after it does not pay for any of the street closures from yeah. public works and all that, just to be clear. No. But, yeah. but and Mr. Reyes is the only one that, uh, since I've been here, that has, Absolutely. has paid the fee. I guess, it's yeah. in my, and I went back and watched the meeting, and I went back and looked at the agenda, and these fees and this amount wasn't on there. And I asked at the last time, what is the total amount? And I got estimates, 10 to 20, 18,000. And so yeah. if I never got the exact amount on these fees back in December, and nor was it on the agenda. And so I see it now, and I think, well, I, I would have been in favor of the chamber paying those fees, and if they were presented as such. And so I guess I see that, what we did Understood. there, and what we here presented before us, that I'd be in favor of doing the same thing. But I don't know, if you want to pay it, go ahead. <laughs> Wait for a second. <laughs> right. <laughs> what are we, uh, I, I mean, I wouldn't mind either if we, if we're, uh, if Mr. Reyes, if you would allow us to be put down as sponsors of the event. Yeah, of course. Like I said, we're always willing, we have always paid the fee, but if you, out of your uh, goodwill and want to support that, yeah. that'd be great. Thank you. I, and, and I think, quite frankly, I mean, so just a real brief history on fees. There was uh, many fees throughout the city that we didn't charge, and then we, we formulated that many years ago. And then, quite honestly, right after that, like, COVID hit everything, and so we, there was no need to <laughs> apply it, it to anything. And so um, I, I, I do think we need to re revisit that topic, but I would agree. I mean, if we waive it on this occasion, I think that would be fine. And then we move on and reestablish that now with more certainty and everybody is equal and we go from there. So is there a motion to approve the item? Waving, a motion to waive the fees. You'll make, you, so your motion is to approve um, the request by w and oh. waiving the fees that are being applied. Yes. And it would be the, to the street closure. We, we break this into two. Okay. Oh. Street closure fees, which is $500. Yeah. Okay. Very well. So uh, just so we're clear, th there is a, two items to this uh, topic. So you're making the request to waive the fees and to approve the closing of Main Street. Yeah, both motions. Yeah, uh, I make one mo Yeah, two motions, I guess, right? Well, no, wait, just wait, one motion wait, with oh, that wait, item. Okay. Yes, so I'm making the motion. Is there a second? I'll second. Okay, there's a motion and a second. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Aye. Motion carries on that aspect. Okay, the second part of this request is to sell alcohol during the event. Now, that is self-explanatory. Um, is there a motion to approve this item? Mr. Mayor, I'd like to make a motion to approve the second part of item 5E. Okay, thank you. There's a uh, motion. As a, and there's a second. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Nay. Nay. All right, motion carries. Thank you very much. All right, congratulations and good luck. Yeah, thank you. I just want to thank the city. 17 years we've been doing this, so yes. it's always been great always partnership. Great um, at, when we used to do it at Catalco, actually, we used to pay a lot more. Right, <laughs> but please quite a bit a, more. Please list us as a sponsor of you. Yeah, most no, most definitely. Now that you have waived it, and it's on the table. It. So right. and we'll right. and we'll probably come back with a presentation of some money for some, one of the it. groups. You guys are gonna have to tell me who. Thank you very much. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Good luck. All right. Next item on the agenda is discussion and potential action to approve contract award to Erickson Hall for construction management services to the Lion Center Pool Rehabilitation Project in the amount not to exceed $88,352. Further authorize city manager to execute associated contract documents. Presented by Rachel Fonseca, Parks and Recreation Manager. Rachel. Good evening, members of the council. Rachel Fonseca, Parks and Recreation Manager. The item before you is a contract for construction management services for the Lion Center Pool Plaster Rehabilitation Project. Staff received two proposals for services, and after careful review, determined that Erickson Hall is the firm most qualified to manage the pool rehabilitation project. Erickson Hall meets all of the specific pool expertise required in the technical specifications. It is a pool expertise that the staff does not currently possess. 
staff is requesting approval of a contract that is not to exceed the $88,352 and authorize the city manager to execute the contract. Erickson Hall is here on Zoom for any questions that council may have regarding their services. Thank you very much. Is there a desire by council to make a motion to approve? Yes, Mr. Mayor, I've reviewed the information for this item and find it to be acceptable and I'd like to make a motion to approve item 5F. There's a motion. Is there a second to this item? In it. All right, there's a second. Uh, any discussion? <clears throat> All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. Thank you. Congratulations. Thank you, Rachel. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. All right. Next item on the agenda is uh, item G, review and potential action to approve professional services agreement with Clear Source Financial Consulting for a comprehensive user and regulatory master fee schedule implementation and full cost allocation plan. Contract agreement is for uh, a not to exceed annual amount of $45,900 for their authorized city manager to execute the agreement. Presented by Carla Romero, Finance Director, City Treasurer. Thank you. The backup is on page 76 through 96. Thank you. Um, just one point of clarification. It's not an annual amount. It's a not to exceed amount. So one lump sum. I'm sure our consultant on Zoom uh, would like an annual amount, but okay. this is a not to exceed amount contract. And for the record, it's uh, clarified. Thank you. Yes. Uh, the timeline of when we started this process is on the screen. Uh, we started it issued. We issued the RFP back in November. The responses were received in December. We had an internal selection committee of Guillermo Cias, um, our public works director, Sylvia Luna, our finance manager, and myself. We unanimously are recommending and selected ClearSource um, as a preferred vendor to conduct the fee study. We did have three um, different proposals that were received, but felt that ClearSource uh, really understood the scope of the work and also provided us the lowest cost estimate to complete the work. They were the clear winner there? Yes, there they go. were the clear winner. There you go. You know what's up. <laughs> um, if approved tonight, the contract would start April 1st, and the final report would be submitted sometime in August for review and consideration of the city council. Um, just a brief summary, most of the fees of the city haven't been updated for 15 to 20 years. Um, and so really this is an opportunity to take a look at all of our cost of service to evaluate uh, what it is costing to then determine do we want to get closer to full cost recovery or incrementally um, get there, what are the steps to get there, and um, what type of services are we currently providing because our services we're providing that we are not charging fees for as well um, that we may want to consider also implementing in the future. This was also, uh, as an important reminder, the second most important revenue evaluation item during our 2022 community workshop event. And so we felt as staff that it was very important that we go ahead and move forward with that recommendation from our residents. And then um, the recommendation does also include a uh, study or an additional follow-up to the study in year two. And the reason we're recommending that is because we know we're not going to capture everything the first go around. We know that as we continue to implement um, any any changes in a fee structure, uh, that something's going to come up, just as uh, I'll take a note of when we go over our policies, very minor edits and tweaks, and we want to build that also into the recommendation for this particular consultant to take on those efforts as well um, about a year after implementation of the first fee study. And that concludes my presentation. I'm happy to answer any questions. And we do have a consultant um, also available. Janet is available on Zoom. Thank you, Janet, for being available. Is there a motion to approve the item? A motion to approve. There's a motion to approve. Is there a second? To I'll second it. There's a motion and a second. Any further discussion? All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. Thank you very much. Very much. All right. So next item, uh, review and potential action to approve InfoSend Master Service Agreement for utility bill data processing, printing, and mailing services for a not to exceed, is this an annual amount? This is an annual amount, yes. Annual amount mm -hmm. of $56,000. Further authorize the city manager to execute this agreement. Presented by Carlo Romero, Finance Director, City Treasurer. Thank you. This RFP was also issued in November. Responses, again, were received by December. We did receive two responses and uh, did interview both firms. Um, the review committee consisted of Maricela Webster, which is our finance analyst, and Zaida Solis, which is our accountant. Uh, both would be spearheading the implementation if approved tonight. 
um, the contract would, uh, negotiations have occurred, and if council approves it, the implementation would start really quickly. It takes about four to six weeks. Um, they'll basically, they, we're not restructuring our entire bill, but InfoSend uh, would be the ones actually printing and mailing out the bill. The city would still continue to prepare the bills, and it would be in the same format as currently um, they are in with very minor tweaks in order to... Um, Ma maximize some savings that right. they are recommending. Right. This is a summary of the cost. It's currently costing us almost $90,000 a year to print these bills in-house, and it's a lot of staff time. Okay. It takes about four different staff members, about three days, and that's if our machines don't jam up. Right. Then that means we have to call someone, and it takes longer to get those bills out. So what we are um, proposing is that staff utilize their time for other things that they are currently not able to do, uh, like uh, reaching out to customers, providing better customer service, doing um, reaching out to delinquent customers on a more continuous basis, mm -hmm. um, and being able to do other internal um, processes that we currently are not able to do. The items in green would remain. Those would not be cost savings because we're not asking to reduce our labor force, but rather repurpose that labor force. It's about 32 to 40 hours a month. Um, and so the current cost savings are noted there at the bottom, uh, about $69,000. Um, and uh, also included in the proposal is uh, the ability to be able to do some bill inserts, um, which InfoSyn can also produce print and mail. This is what our office looks like when we are doing all of this paper processing, printing, and mailing out. Yeah. And I'm happy to take any questions you might have. Thank you very much. I know for years I've all, all you know, I've, I've brought it up. It's like such a laborious process. I don't know why we were doing it, you know, to be quite honest with you. It's, but I'm glad that it's being addressed. Is there a motion to approve the item? Motion to approve. A second? I'll second it. Second. All right, fantastic. Uh, there was a second and a delayed second, so... We'll take. Uh, we'll give it counsel. to Donnie. We'll, we'll give it to Donnie. Donnie. All right, well, because he's not feeling well, right. so we'll give it to Donnie. <laughs> he probably right. started. He probably, first. he probably actually made it the motion, like, yeah. but then yeah. it was delayed, yeah. and then he's like, you know what? I'll just say the it's second. Like there you go. go. There's a motion and a second. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Fantastic. Thank you. Motion carries. Thank <clears> you. And uh, the next item on the agenda is uh, by Carlo Romero, our finance director, city treasurer, to review and potential action to adopt resolution 2023-. Approving a purchasing contracting policy for the city of Raleigh. The policy will add clarity to government fees and charges for service, as well as providing direction and guidance to staff. Thank you. So the next two, we did a comprehensive review just of all of our policies. We determined that these two next policies needed some minor revisions, and I do apologize because the red line version was not included, and I'm going to put it up on the screen. Super, super minor edits. Um, this policy actually was revamped over the summer, and it became effective October 20th. So we've had a few months, and so we have a few little tweaks based on what has occurred since October that we'd like to uh, present for your consideration tonight. The first minor tweak is that we found that it wasn't clear in the policy that if we had to pay like the IID uh, for an operational regulatory permit, that did that have to come to council? And so this provides us guidance of saying if there's other state or local government or government agencies requiring some sort of regulatory, operational, or project-based fees or charges for services, they would be excluded, um, and they could be just, just paid as an internal process by the department. The other item for consideration is that under the public-owned utility infrastructure expenses, it wasn't clear what would happen if there was not a budget already for that particular item. The expenditure limit is much higher at $100,000 for these particular improvements or repairs and maintenance. And so we needed to provide some clear direction to staff as to, um, well, what happens when that expense is not included in the budget already? What do we do next? And so that unanticipated, unbudgeted expense would need to come to council for approval at the next available uh, budget report at, or an independent staff report um, as soon as possible. And those are really the only two edits. This is just a summary slide as a reminder of our current categories and thresholds, and there's no proposed changes to any of these limits. And that's Thank it. Thank you. All right. So is there a motion to approve the item? Mr. Mayor, I'll go ahead and make a motion. All right. There's a motion. Is there a second? A second. There's a motion and a second. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 All right. Thank you. Moving on to the next item. Again, presented by Carlo Romero, Finance Director, City Treasurer. Review and potential action to adopt Resolution 2023, approving an investment policy for the City of Raleigh. 
This policy will formally document how interest earnings and changes in the fair market value are recorded by the city on a quarterly basis. So the treasurer's report is submitted on a quarterly basis and includes all the funds of the cities, all the accounts, and our primary objective is to uh, safeguard the principle of all of our investments of the city, have some liquidity, and then also provide some yield. We are not asking to um, add any new investment strategies or types. Um, the policy already meets all of the state guidelines, but what we're asking for is that we incorporate how we actually allocate interest. During our audit this year, this was one of the items that were being audited and they wanted to have a reference and a document and a policy that was structured so that our auditors can um, then know that we are following um, a certain process and be able to audit that process. And so this is already what we are currently doing. We allocate interest best based on the cash um, on hand at that particular quarter for each one of the funds. And then also the fair market value changes are adjusted as well based on the same strategy. And so we're just formalizing the process we are already adhering to. And that's really the only change that we're recommending uh, for this particular policy at this time. Thank you. Is there a motion to approve the item? Motion to approve. Is there a second? I'll second it. All right, thank you. Um, all those in favor, please say aye. 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 Motion carries. Thank you. Okay. Next item is an item by Councilmember Gil Reblar. It's a letter to the Board of Supervisors directed at uh, Supervisor Kelly, as a chairperson with my signature, and it's regarding the public health crisis fentanyl possesses uh, or poses, I should say. Uh, I've read the letter. Is there any questions from Council on the item, or is there a motion to approve? If I can just maybe a little. No. Go ahead. Oh, I'm sorry. I didn't know. I, I, I'll, I'll go ahead and make a motion that we can discuss. Is sure. There, there is a motion, a second. Is there a second? I'll second it. All right. And then there's discussion. Go ahead. Yes. Yeah, so obviously, as you know, Chief Jimmy said, you know, the, the big issue with fentanyl and other uh, drugs, I commend this council. Once again, I commend this council for uh, not the selection of Chief Jimmy, but also your uh, your diligence in, in combating fentanyl and drugs in our community. And, uh, as I talked with Chairman Kelly over the weekend, you know, with substance abuse, addiction, drugs, it's, a mu it's much deeper, right? You can't force yourself out of it. You can't punish your way out of something. And so um, I think the stats in this letter lay it out very clear of this crisis um, that uh, I think will bring this letter will bring attention to. Um, you know, personally, uh, I can say that uh, addiction, uh, substance abuse, um, war on drugs has impacted as I'm sure many in our community, uh, whether it's my, you know, my aunt Sandy, who uh, I'm sure some of the PD knew Sandy in the in the streets. So, you know, I look at you know what she grew up. I, I look at the lack of services here and treatment. And I can't imagine you know growing up in the 70s, 80s, dealing with addiction and substance abuse and the lack of services. Well, personally, as me, you know, I look at these fentanyl accidental overdose deaths, um, you know, and, and some of the things I you know consumed and experimented with in my youth, I could have easily been one of those stats. I, I do consider myself very fortunate, very lucky, uh, very blessed to, um, you know, not be one of those stats. And so I always kind of told myself, I've gotten a position of uh, influence or power. I would do something, or at least try to do something to address this and uh, the serious issue that affects so many of us. So many, not just user, seller, uh, abuser, but families, you know, the indirect uh, impacts and so it's really just I know it's fentanyl and public health but I think it, it really brings attention and light to the drug crisis and because it's much deeper right it's much deeper than substance it's much deeper than the addiction it's it's always deeper and so um yeah I think this is going to bring some much needed attention like I said Brawley what you guys are doing what we're, we're doing with the task force I think other cities are doing things and sometimes we can work in silos. I think this is an opportunity to everyone come together at the table and, and really share resources, share what everyone's doing, and, and hopefully you know save some lives. Because ultimately, I think bringing attention to this will ultimately save lives. And, All right. Um, yeah. yeah. Um, you know, we, we brought this up, uh, this this issue last summer or prior to last summer. I know we discussed this fentanyl issue, um, and we were trying to find solutions to it. Um, and, and as I mentioned before, uh, Council Member uh, Warren and I were, were kind of... Uh, pointed to that and then we realized very quickly that chief uh, Duran was already all over that and all the stuff he was bringing to us uh, and we were just empowering him and his department to do what was needed right and I think we've seen the success of some of those statistics that were put up on the screen today but I think there's a lot more going on behind the scenes and and I think that 
our police department is great, doing a great job. But I think uh, here in our north end, specifically, right, and not just Brawley, but we discuss the smaller communities up north, we, we have that issue. And, and I think it's a, a great start to, you know, continue to uh, obviously bring this up and, and assist not just those in our community, but those are here in our north end. So, All right. Well, thank you. There's a motion and a second. Uh, all those in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Aye. Motion carries. Thank you. All right. He's <laughs> like Don. He's opposed. Right. <laughs> but he's, right. he's in right. favor, though. He's in favor. All right. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, like in, informational reports update on City of Brawley declaration of local emergency as a result of the COVID nineteen pandemic presented by Fire Chief Mike York, and that's just informational. And it'll, and be, so, the and it'll be the last. last and that's the last time, Chief York. All right. But and you'll still be out. here at City Council. All right. Member. There you go. All right. All right. <laughs> Good. Next, the City Council member reports. We'll start with Council Member Hamby. Mayor Nava, I'm going to defer mine to the to the next meeting. All right, uh, Council Member Rebelar? I got a few words. No. Right. <laughs> so uh, I, I do want to thank the staff. I feel like I'm the only one who hasn't done that yet, and uh, here I am to be trying to save the world without acknowledging those that are doing the work. And I I get it. I'm a public employee. I got one of my bosses here, and I know what it's like to be working day in day out and see five individuals show up and tell you what to do. So uh, I, I get it. Uh, and. I know, sorry, I know it's like to be a government employee, overworked, under-resourced, uh, and um, it's tough. And I know there's some public misconception on the public sometimes of being a government employee with our weekends off and health benefits and collecting our big government paychecks. And maybe that's maybe the big government paycheck's partly true for some in the public sector, particularly IID's top administrators. <laughs> <laughs> but it's not necessarily true for a large majority of that, those that work in local government. I really say nine out of ten public sector's employees don't make more than six figures. You know, I don't. You can look me up on Transparent California, and I work at the top office of one of the biggest, if not the biggest, public sector agencies in the Valley. That's why Chief York and Tommy have seen me waiting on tables on the weekends. Huh? <laughs> but, you know, I think when, you know, a large portion making less than 100000 you see how inflation has impacted our society. I think a recent study showed that about 60% of Americans are living paycheck to paycheck, the increasing cost of gas. We're our car-dependent county and the high cost of simply owning a home, hundreds of thousands of dollars to, to buy a home. Um, it's tough right now. It's not tough. Not just, I'm not saying it's public, but all, all workers, all those young families, all those trying to just come up. Um, and especially so as a former, as a public government employee and as a former county CEO and uh, Brawley boy Tony Rojotis once told me, you know, you won't get rich working in the public sector, but it will be rewarding. And it is for me, and I hope it is for you too. You guys are the driving force behind this city. So thank you. Thank you for serving our public with what very little you have at your disposal. You know, I understand. So since I understand, that means you'll get empathy from me, but not necessarily sympathy. You won't get that. So we can thank you at these meetings, but we can also thank you, thank you beyond these meetings, um, you know, and looking at things like, uh, obviously people are looking at pay, right? But I think there's even certain things such as additional holidays that are recognized, the possibility of flex schedules, essentially allowing a three-day week and every other week. You know, I even just saw Spain pass menstrually for women, which is something that never crossed my mind until you now living, you know, and having a preteen daughter and living with a full-time working um, my, my partner. And other things that are really about preparing for a new workforce that is incoming and how do we incentivize people to come work for our city. It's a conversation being had across the public and private sectors and how do we recruit and retain a new generation of workers who have different wants and needs than the generations that came before. As everyone in this can attest, it's difficult finding workers right now. I think we'll find out pretty soon uh, some of our vacancies. Um, and you know, you could, people can say, hey, people just don't want to work these days, but I think it's a fine dance between both employers and employees for employee or employers to really give employees a reason to want to work, whether it be financial, health benefits, creative incentives, culture, upward, upward mobility, and so forth. So I look forward to having that conversation on this dais I said, especially with some of the positions we will be needing to fill and a plan of succession for others. Um, it's also important to show thanks for those. I know Officer Espinoza is not here. He's a new school resource officer. I know Mayor Pro Tem Castro, I think you were talking to Eric earlier. And I can tell you, being on the school board, working at that junior high, the discipline issues uh, were there before COVID. And after COVID, they've just been amplified. There's a really big issue. And I think we're seeing it. We're seeing it spell on our streets. And when it even comes to school's discipline, it's not like kids are showing up to school and then acting out. It's, it's a much bigger issue. So I really thank Officer Espinoza and our PD because that's not easy, you know, especially with uh, some of the, now it's criminal activity, as we saw over the weekend with the shooting. And so um, 
Yeah, I think, uh, like I said, going back to this council for really putting emphasis on PD and building that bridge between schools and cities. I campaigned on that. You guys got a head start. You guys really have to say you guys are in our law enforcement, and you guys have really got a head start on building that bridge between the school and cities, and I commend you uh, for that. And, and going back, I know there's been a lot of talks regarding communication, and I'd like to see our PD. I know there's been uh, talking about social media page, and I don't know if... Uh, What's, what can we get to, you know, um, accelerate that process? I can bring some policies. I can, you know, I, I know a thing or two about public sector uh, social media, so I can assist as well just to get the word out. I know over the weekend there was a shooting, and I know I didn't find until Sunday, and I know people were re reaching out to me, what's going on, and then Monday then it came out in the newspaper, so even getting the word out, and so I've been more than happy to said, assist the PD or, or any way to, Get that if we need to prove something like that on the next agenda, or at the very least, have something in place by that. I'm not trying to rush you, Chief, but I know there's uh, com the community wants to know, and I think it's a way, great way to build a trust. I see our sheriff's office has a really great social media presence, and, and as a former sheriff officer, I, I think you, you bring that, you bring that, Chief. So I really like to see that uh, come before us, and uh, also thank. Uh, I know on Valentine's Day, the tree fell on Rio Vista, and I saw Public Works out there lifting up a tree and moving around in the rain on Valentine's Day. So my hat's off to, to um, those as well and all staff. So that concludes my report, and thank you. Thank you. All right. Thank you very much. Uh, we'll move on to Council Member Wharton. Uh, Mr. Mayor, I'm going to hold my uh, report till my voice comes back. I appreciate <laughs> that. Thank you very much. And uh, we'll hear next from uh, Mayor Pro Tem, Mr. Ramon Castro. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, yeah, it's funny, uh, Councilmember Revelar, I mentioned, uh, you know, future, uh, you know, workers and going forward and people come to the city. I've been studying labor statistics for well over a decade now. Uh, and obviously in my field, being a tradesman, a journeyman electrician or inside wireman, I know a council member, uh, Hamby, also being a tradesman, and uh, Mayor Nava as well, right? I mean, you, you're a realtor, but really, uh, I've seen him out there, you know, swinging a hammer, and so we come from that. Uh, with that, I, I'd just like to know from our city attorney if it's okay. I, I'm going to do it anyways, but I want to, we will present the next three months. My stipend is going to be donated, uh, well, not donated, but presented as a scholarship to three kids going into the trades. Uh, so it'd be for the months of March, April, and May. I want to know, I mean, I'm going to present it as a check anyways, but I want to know if it's okay if I present it there as, you know, the mayor pro tem presenting this, uh, presenting my stipend. If it's not okay, then I'll just be as a regular citizen, but... I don't I don't see why there would be a problem. I, I, you want, I just want to make sure. I, just, I, don't yeah. know, I don't want to get in trouble, and I don't want the city to get in any trouble. Better safe than sorry. Yes, uh, you know how that goes, right? I mean, it, we're always... It, yeah, I mean, uh, you, it's your stipend, and thank you, you are mayor pro tem, and... So we're we'll doing. All just right. Tell them so, don't cash it for three or four weeks. Yeah, be good. <laughs> no, we'll be taking it in uh, in a different form, maybe in cash or whatever, and we'll be looking for some sponsors to promote, uh, push the, the 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 trades amongst our youth. I know that many years ago I discussed that we were having a huge increase in retirees uh, uh, over the next decade, and a a similar decrease in young men and women between the ages of thirty going into the trades, which means there is going to be a huge need for skilled labor a decade later, and we are there right now. And I can tell you that um, you know from last summer, all the hours I was working seventy hour weeks. Uh, you know we had you know full manpower every project we we couldn't get enough electricians on on board and so that's what we'll be presenting that um uh and i want like again i want to promote that and help our youth it's it's our traveling trade right that's what they call it journeyman we go all over the place but a lot of disposable income comes right back into our community so i'd also like to send a quick shout out to my youngest cassandra castro she's on She's watching right now. She wanted to come to the meeting, but I told her she needed to wear like a fancy dress and all that stuff. You know, <laughs> she's gonna come see the mayor. So she said, "I'll just stay home and watch it." So I good. tell her. She said to make sure that I go to the A store and get her her Bullock's hot chicken noodles. I don't know what that is, but I'm going right after the meeting. Well, let's uh, let's wish her uh, hello, right? Hi, so. hi, Cassie. Cassie, how uh, are you? Love you, baby. She's watching right now. All right. <laughs> Hopefully, it'll interest her and then you know watch more of these meetings so she Absolutely. understands how this works, right? Uh, just the last thing, you know, I just want to point out that our the citizens' concerns, like, they're, they're big for me. They're very important. Uh, what our folks at Cedar Plaza are bringing up are very, very important. I just don't want us to jump in, in to, uh, to any conclusions and just in, in, and act 
without doing you know our due diligence right and, and and letting staff take care of everything prior to us making any decisions or recommendations um because the last thing i want to do is is hurt our businesses downtown um again i wasn't the one I, I wasn't you know big on it because i understand how how difficult it is to invest and to actually get a return on it but seeing it coming back and 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 and, and waking up, no no pun intended. Uh, there you, go. Um, you were missing that one. I was missing that and one. You had like two chances. Of I know. I just, uh, <laughs> you know, my English is limited. Oh, come on, come on. <laughs> Anyways, uh, I just wanted to point that out. It, it, they are a, a great concern to me. It just I have to right now, first and foremost, is overall quality of life to our, for our citizens here in the city of Brawley. And obviously having a robust uh, downtown uh, businesses and, and, and things happening, and we have choices of restaurants and, and, and entertainment, I think it's huge for our quality of life. So again, that's that. So I don't want us to do anything that's going to hurt that process. So um, and one last thing is I could ask our city manager to look in, uh, perhaps now that we're seeing all the little businesses uh, opening up here on our on this one area of downtown and looking to crosswalks. I know that it's been discussed before in front of Inferno, uh, crossing south, and pr maybe even in the middle, because I know there, there's more stuff opening up. So I yeah. uh, just was watching folks bounce around from Inferno to 805. And uh, and, and now we have more control of it. You know, yeah, it's not absolutely. A so it, it, we did have crosswalks in the past, and then obviously because of the median, that went away. Um, but I'm sure. And then, you know, I know that study that we did many years back um, did have areas for crosswalks, so. There's that. Yeah, yeah. But you're I, right. They're it, all over the spot, you know, and then they're crying, trying to cross like where Inferno's at and yeah, running. And, yeah. You know, it's like. It's, it's doing that like That's been an issue for many So, years, yeah, I so. think it's time for us to address it, perhaps take a look at it. And obviously, I know you have timelines in the budget already. Uh, you know, obviously, we know what we're spending all that money, but I think uh, that's, that should be a priority considering anything that's happening down there. That's all I have. Besides, just want to thank staff again for always being so helpful and uh you know, working with everybody and, and putting up with all the things that they do. So thank you, Mr. Mayor. That's that, that actually may even improve, you know, the local economy. They're just slowing traffic down, having them stop. And then, I mean, I know it's inconvenient during the week, you know, and stuff like that during the day. But, you know, it just there's a reason they're out there. You know, it's not just a form of crossing. It's it limits traffic a little bit. Anyway, yeah, absolutely. But thank you very much. Yeah, for that's, your a, that's all I have, Mr. Mayor. I appreciate it. Um, I do want to thank staff. You know, you guys are all working very hard. I know you are, and I interact with many of you uh, throughout the weeks, and I do appreciate everything you're doing as not just the mayor, but as, like, uh, just a resident and a citizen here. So I appreciate it very much. Um, do want to thank uh, Chief Duran for helping out. Uh, we, we did a, a small tour over at the Navy training facility outside of town, um, and that was a joy to be out there and, and learn a little bit. So I appreciate it very much, Chief. Thank you very much for the generosity in getting us that invitation out there. Appreciate it very much. Thank you. Um, I did attend. It was a short uh, grand opening with the Regional Chamber of Commerce for Heart Insurance, and it was just a short celebration. They are going to have a larger one here in the coming days with the Brawley Chamber and... Um, that, you know, I would encourage everybody to please go out there and support that business and, you know, big investment out there. Hundreds of thousands of dollars to purchase a building and then hundreds of thousands of dollars in renovations. So it's, you know, it's investment. Every dollar counts. And so I live it, I do it too, and it's not cheap, you know. So I always tell people uh, if I had any hair left, I would have lost it a long time ago. And that is, especially today, I would have been like all messed up with the wind and, you know what I mean? So You have a point there. Right? Yeah. So, um... <laughs> So those two items. I also wanted to acknowledge um, the career day at Barbara Worth. I've participated many, many, many years um, at both Barbara Worth and at the high school. High schools is later this week. And um, just wanted to recognize a group of students, and they were the intervention students. They're the kids that are not the best. And they really did, quite frankly, the best job. They were my favorite class. And I opened up by saying this, and I'm Nah, I'm not embarrassed. Uh, but I opened up by saying this. I said, you know, I was, you know, in your shoes when I was your age, seventh grade, I had 26 referrals to the office. 26. You know, so, <laughs> it's you know, all right. it was 26. I had 26. And so, um, but anyway, 
I talked to them about that, and that, quite frankly, from that point, I just had their attention. And they were very receptive, very, very good group of students. And so their eyes opened up. We talked about a whole lot of things. Whenever I go to uh, career day, I don't talk about, like, what I do necessarily. I just talk about, like, whatever you want to do and how you got to get there. I mean, it's hard work. It's commitment. It's dedication, whether that's, you know, through uh, college education, whether that's military, whether that's training or just joining the workforce, whatever it may be. But you have to be the best that you are. And I, I've done it all. I mean, I really have done it all. I don't care if it's cleaning toilets. I'd clean the toilet today. I don't care. You know what I mean? I'll do whatever it takes. You just have to do it as best as you can. And so I, I messaged that, and um, I really uh, enjoyed their feedback. And I can tell you it made an impact on some of their lives. And I'm not saying that to do my own heart. I'm just saying that because I, I brought it up. I'm like, I bet you a lot of people just have gotten, you know, they've forgotten about you. I don't know what their upbringings are like. I don't know what their parent situation or home life is like. But I can I can bet you anything that many of them, like, there's nobody telling them, hey, good job. You know, and so I really do feel like they did a very good job. And and I'm going to request something of Cheek Fjork and, and of uh, Council Member Wharton in the, in the coming weeks. And so I won't say it yet, but I hope that you can help out, and I think that the two of you uh, can assist in something special for them. But um, I just want to not reward them, but I want to just show them a different side of life, you know, that maybe they haven't had in the past. And so um, it was actually very uh, rewarding for myself as well. I had four classes, and I can tell you that they were the most receptive class by far, by far. And uh, they really um, enjoyed hearing the conversation, and they liked hearing about, you know, city stuff and the things that I do in, in my private life and business and stuff like that. But more than anything, they just felt like, uh, hey, somebody's listening to us, and somebody at least is asking us about what we want to do. So that was cool. Very, very cool. So anyway, when you get a chance, please participate in Career Day. You never know when you're going to be that person that makes a difference in somebody. I can tell you, when I was at high school, there was a gentleman that came in. It was, it was my sophomore year, and he was an entrepreneur, and he started a bunch of businesses, and I can still remember him to this day. I mean, that's really what triggered my my desire to go into business, and uh, I never forgot it. So you never know. So anyway, that's the story, and I'm sticking to it. So 26 referrals. Don't hold it against me. Anyway, thank you all very much for all the work you're doing. Let's keep uh, rocking and rolling. Thank you. And we will go on to city attorney report. To Nothing to report, and thank you all very much. We're going to go into closed session in five minutes, but thank you all very much for coming out here. Appreciate it.